Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we check in with the Public Works Department. My guest today is Justin Clausen, Operations Manager with the City of Ames Public Works Department. Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you. So you've been in your position about a year now. Tell me a little bit about what you do. So my days are dealt with um, dealing with anything that happens within the public right-of-way and traditionally that's um, on the street side. So whether it be street maintenance or snow and ice control, um, we also deal with the utility maintenance side which is water mains, sanitary sewers, storm sewers, and also all of the um, grass within the right-of-way and trees as well. So you have an interesting background. I mean, you've worked in construction, you were a construction uh, supervisor here for us, and then moved into the position you have now. What's, uh, what are some of your other uh, background experiences? Um, yeah, my background really, you kind of hit on the head, is, is in construction. I was, I was born into a family that um, had their own construction company. My father had a construction company in western Iowa. Um, I tend to say I've had my hands in the dirt since I could, old enough to walk. So um, my background really is in construction. I, I spent about 10 years in the private industry building roads and bridges prior to coming here to the city. And then at the city, I started off in the engineering department, as you mentioned, construction supervisor, and then moved up about a year ago into the operations side. Now, I know this job keeps you busy year round. One of the um, really exciting projects, one of the ones that a lot of people are affected by is the construction of the Sixth Street Bridge. Can you tell me a little bit about that project? Yeah, that's a, um, a fairly large project for us here. It's uh, about a two and a half million dollar project to reconstruct the Sixth Street Bridge over Squaw Creek. So right adjacent to Brookside Park. Um, the existing bridge is actually removed now. It's out of the way, so the road is closed. Um, the contractor had a pretty good December. The weather was, was um, fairly decent for the first part of December. He was, they were able to get the um, pier footing, then piling in place for the first pier and then they got the stem on the first pier. So the pier is the support structure underneath the bridge. So there are two of those that'll be um, right adjacent to Squaw Creek. So the first one is about 75% complete. So we had kind of hoped and anticipated that's where we would be before Christmas set in and we, we fortunately made it there. So things are tracking pretty well there. So a lot of people, when I mention Sixth Street Bridge, they think it's the railroad overpass and that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the bridge over the river right next to the park. That's that, that, that's correct. That's uh, I, I get a lot of the same questions. People think it's a railroad overpass, um, but no, it is, it is the one over Squaw Creek right next to the park. And uh, it's gone. I mean, the bridge is gone and the street has been closed and the street will remain closed for quite some time. Yes, the, the overall project is going to, um, it'll probably be, it's about an eight to nine month time frame. So when they started in um, early November, we're anticipating um, July, maybe early August is what we're shooting for, for a, a full construction period there. So in addition to reconstructing the bridge, there's also new paving on either end of it to um, tie into the new bridge grades and things like that. And the bridge will be wider. It'll have um, a larger opening underneath for Squaw Creek. It will um, feature things such as a 12-foot uh, uh, bike and pedestrian lane on, on one side of it, and it'll have another sidewalk on the other side. And it's got some um, enhancements to it as well, such as some colored and stained concrete, some architectural concrete touches, and we'll also have um, some LED path lightings that, that go across the bridge, so when people use it at night, they can still see and, and use it. So does the bridge piece itself, is it come in pre-made, or do they construct it right there. It's going to be built right there on site. So what will come in pre-made are going to be um, what I'll call the bridge beams that'll be underneath the deck that you see there. Um, it will come in, they will come in, in in individual pieces. I think the longest spans are about 105 feet long, um, maybe a little more than that. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head, but they'll, they'll come in by via truck and then they'll be lifted in place with cranes. And once those are in place, they'll They'll put down some temporary formwork and pour concrete on top of that for the final bridge service. But you won't see any cranes that are dropping a bridge into place. No, you won't. Nope, unfortunately not. That'd be nice to be able to do that because we could build it off-site a lot faster, but this will be all be built in place. Uh, one thing, although the bridge is no longer there and the road is closed, uh, access to Brookside Park was maintained to the west. Yes, we, we worked very closely with um, Parks and, and Recreation and also with Iowa State University to make sure that um, we had as little impact as possible to the alternative users of that route, which is primarily Brookside Park. Um, so we're maintaining access to the park from the west side from the university. 
Um, the park is still open. It'll be open, you know, as um, throughout the entire project. And then also part of that, we also put in a temporary um, pedestrian and bike detour on the east side of Squaw Creek. So if you enter into Brookside Park, there is a small pedestrian bridge just upstream of the bridge that, that uh, we are building over 6th Street. And then a temporary path will bring you back onto the, the existing shared use path in there. So we can still maintain um, pedestrian bike connectivity through the corridor. So vehicles are basically detoured to Lincoln Way, but the bikes and pedestrians still sort of meander through the park. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the other things, if we can switch gears here for a minute, is uh, you talked about uh, maintaining the public right-of-way and the grass and the landscaping on that. One of the things that the City of Ames is dealing with and has been for a while is the emerald ash borer. Yes, we're, uh, we are in the um, second year of our 20-year plan on this. So we've, we've started last, um, about a year ago, last winter, started with our first tree cuttings and we, we removed... Um, about 230 trees last year, and then we have replanted um, between the city itself and between a partnership with the Ames Foundation, we've, we've replanted over 370, I believe, trees. So we're, we're, we're ahead of the curve on the replanting, um, but we'll, we'll continue that for the next, you know, 20 years here until we get through our program of removal and, and replacement of ash and trees. the emerald ash borer, is it a larva, parasite, something that it, and it's been known to kill? Yeah, it's a, um, for lack of a better term, it's a bug. Um, it, it, will, it will look um, as a larva, it looks maybe, I'll use um, a term like a worm. Um, it bores through the ash wood, and what it does is it essentially robs the tree of taking nutrients and moisture up to the top of the tree, and the tree will die. Um, it was first noticed in the United States, I want to say in the early 2000s, and it spread um, from the roughly Michigan area out. So it has been identified in a number of locations in Iowa. It has not been identified in Ames yet. Um, but nearby. But nearby. Story City has found it, and I believe Boone as well. So we are within the 15-mile radius of, of its expected um, travel pattern. So for all intents and purposes, we assume it's here. We just haven't um, spotted it yet. When, when the um, larvae become adults, they turn into a, uh, a green beetle, maybe about the size of... Um, if you look at Lincoln's head on a penny, so they're very small, but they're, they've got a really emerald green look to them. So they're, they're pretty distinct if you see them. Um, so we've been on the lookout for that. You know, our, our emerald ash borer program deals with um, treatment and removal and replacement as well. So we treated um, almost a thousand trees this year. We didn't find it there. We found some trees that were um, maybe not healthy, they might be suspect, but we didn't see them there. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it um, you know, in the coming years. Yeah, that is a great program, and again, we've been a tree city for many decades, and to maintain that uh, urban tree canopy, really important, and it's a great partnership with the Ames Foundation. It is. They, they approached us um, in March of last year, March of this year, I should say, March of 2015, and um, wanted to do some, some outreach, some help with, with the program. So what we've partnered with them to do is um, do some proactive replanting. So it enabled, it enabled us to basically enhance our urban canopy, get more diversity in the, in the canopy itself, and help us to be um, stronger against a future pest or, or disease infestation that may come. And by proactively replanting, um, we can get these new trees growing before we have to take down some of the larger ones as well. Sounds like a great program. It Justin, is. I know you're busy. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. So if you've enjoyed this recent snowfall, don't forget that anytime the snow falls in Ames, you have up to 10 daylight hours to clear your walks. Remember, we have a lot of pedestrians who use those to get around town. So remember, 10 daylight hours after a snowfall stops, your walks must be clean. Another thing to think about, if you still have a Christmas tree and you want to get rid of it, remember that the Christmas trees are recycled at the Ames uh, Parks and Recreation Maintenance Facility on East 13th Street. You'll see that on the south side of the street. Look for the sign in the driveway and you can drop your Christmas tree during any daylight hours. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.